Alright, how's it going everybody? This is Video Boy, and welcome to LibGDX 2D Platformer Tutorial Series Episode 3. So today we're going to be adding in um, entities and also applying gravity to them. Uh, so a little bit of physics involved. Uh, and uh, we're also going to be cleaning up some of the code so that it uh, makes some more sense so we can add in the entities. We're also going to add in the player with the controls and uh, jumping. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, by the way, this tutorial you can follow it whether you're using the tiled maps or the custom maps. Either one should work. Uh, the way we've designed the game, that's just how it is. So you can do whatever you want. Um, so let's uh, let's start by cleaning up some stuff. So we're going to get rid of the uh, the GDX logo image here. Okay. Uh, let's remove this stuff here. We're not going to need that anymore. Um, oh yeah, this here. Okay, uh, I think we'll remove this as well. Alright, and control shift O to change all that. Um, so now we have a couple things to change in the game screen. So let's go do that. Uh, sorry, not the game screen, the game map. Um, by the way, the way we're designing this, uh, we have the game map and everything in the main class, but this is not really the right way to do it. Uh, so in the last tutorial series, we had different screens, and then we would have the game map probably like within the game screen or something. Uh, and then we would have like a menu screen, an option screen. Uh, but right now, we're just putting everything in the main class just for simplicity. Uh, but if you guys want to make this into like a, a real professional game or something, you can of course use screens. It makes more sense. Uh, but for this tutorial, we'll just keep it simple. Um, so we're going to have a couple of things here we need to change. Uh, so first off, the render and update methods will no longer be abstract. Uh, so they're going to be actual methods now, with their own code, and they're going to be rendering the entities. Um, also in the render here, we're going to be requiring the sprite batch. Since we will be rendering the entities, we need a sprite batch. Um, and to once we add that, we need to fix a couple of little things around here. Okay, so here is going to require a sprite batch. Okay, uh, leave that open because we're going to need it. And I'll also put it here. Okay, um, one other thing we're going to need to do is... Uh, whoops, we have to import sprite batch here. Um, after we render the map, we want to render the entities onto the map. So what we need to do to do that is we need to do um, super dot render, and then we pass that stuff in. So what super is? It's basically the super class of this one. So you can see here, tiled game map extends the game map. So that means the super class of tiled game map is game map. So when we do super.render, we're calling the render method in the super class. So basically we're calling this method here. And this is where we're going to draw the entity. So basically calling super.render uh, is going to be our function for rendering the entities. And we want to render it after the, uh, the game map. So let's do that here as well. Uh, I forgot one other thing in the other class. Uh, we'll do that after. Um, so super.render. All right, there you go. Um, also here, we need to start the batch and end it. And um, as you can see here, we already do that because we had a batch already. Um, so let's remove that batch because we're not going to need it. Uh, also in the dispose method here, you remove it. OK, there you go. Um, Yes, I forgot this one thing here. In the tiled game map, we need to set the projection matrix uh, to the um, the uh, camera's combined matrix so that it renders according to the way the camera wants to render the game. Uh, so you need to make sure to do that. And then here, we need to pass the uh, sprite batch in. Okay, there you go. All right, the next thing we're going to implement is the entity types. Um, and then the entity class, and then eventually the player. Then after that, we're going to have to implement the collisions. So 
Uh, let's do that. We need to create a new package for that since we're going to have quite a few new classes. Um, so we'll do dot entity. Or let's do entity just, just because. And we'll create a new class here called entity type. Um, actually, this needs to be an enum. We'll just change it after. Okay. So entity type is going to have a couple of uh, different settings. We're only going to implement one entity type to start out with. Um, so it'll be the player entity. I won't cover how to add other ones, uh, but it's going. we're going to be setting it up so that it's all uh, easy to add new entities. So if you guys want to add uh, enemies or you know pretty much anything you want, you can just add it in here. Okay, and it's going to have four different parameters or four different fields I should say. Uh, so it'll have an ID, it'll have a width and height. We'll have a weight as well. Alright, let's create the constructor for it. Um, here, let's actually generate it. Uh, I always have to look for it. There you go. Yep, and it'll take all of them. Okay, there you go. Um, now let's generate the getters and setters. Uh, we're just going to have getters though. We're not going to put any setters. So we can get the different data from the different entity types. Um, and I think that'll actually be it for this class. Um, so basically what's happening is we're creating a new entity type uh, with the ID of player. I'll cover what IDs we'll do in the next episode. I'll talk about next episode at the end of this one. Uh, and then I'm giving it a width and a height. So the tile size is 16. So I want to make the player a little smaller than that so they can fit through some cracks uh, and things like that. Um, and I gave it a height of 32. And the weight, we're going to be using the weight for gravity. So this isn't actually how gravity works in real life. Uh, we're not going to make super accurate physics. Um, but we will have some sort of weight property so different entities get affected by gravity differently. Um, so we gave him a weight of 40 here, our little player. Um, but we can have things that are lighter that uh, fall slower because they aren't as heavy, uh, just like gravity works. Um, but yeah, we won't be using the actual uh, gravity formula with the constant and everything. We're just going to keep it simple. All right, and let's create another class. So this is going to be an abstract entity class. So all our entities are going to um, take from this one. So we have a lot of stuff to implement in here. Uh, we're just going to implement a couple of things to start out. Um, so we have to have a position. So we're going to be using the libgdx vector2 class. I don't remember if we did that in the first tutorial series, uh, but it's definitely good. It basically just keeps track of an x and y, and it also has a bunch of uh, good mathematic uh, functions we can use with it. Uh, we're also going to have to keep track of the entity type, so we'll create a field for that. Uh, we'll have one float for the y velocity. So this will keep track of the um, how much uh, speed or velocity, I should say, um, an entity has in the y axis. So if they jump, their y velocity is going to go above zero, so it's going to make them go up, and then gravity will make their y velocity go down until they hit the ground. Uh, so I'll explain that a little more after once we actually implement this stuff. Uh, we also need access to the game map so we can check collisions. And I also want to have a variable to keep track of whether the entity is on the ground or not. So let's set that to false right away and we'll also set the y velocity to zero. Okay, there you go, we import that. Now let's create a um, constructor here. Uh, it's not going to take the velocity, but it's going to take the other stuff. Uh, it won't take the pose, we'll, we'll change that. We'll use an X and Y instead. And so I have float X and float Y. Now we can remove this super thing here. Um, so this uh, pose is equal to new vector 2. 
So we're just going to create a new vector 2 using the x and y that we got here. Okay, and uh, that's it for the constructor. So we're going to need a couple of other methods here. Uh, we're going to need an update method. Uh, we're not going to make it abstract because we're actually going to put some calculations in here relating to gravity. Uh, whoops, we need a couple of parameters. We need a delta time, like usual. And we're also going to take in gravity here as well. Okay, and then we're going to have an abstract render method. And this, of course, will take in a sprite batch so we can render. Whoops. Uh, import that um, and let's create a couple of getters and setters here so um, by the way I, to do this menu I do alt shift s I think I said in an older episode but uh, I want to mention it again just in case so you guys can follow uh, and basically it's just going to be all getters again so we're not going to be using it uh, we don't need one for the map uh, get pose yeah that's good get type and I guess we can have that as well here uh, and we're also going to implement a couple of other getters actually um, this one I will not have uh, but let's create a getter for the uh, X and Y so so pose.x and we're also going to get some for the width and height and also the weight okay so basically um, to get access to the width and height and weight uh, we have access to the entity type so we can just um, uh, make something very simple here so uh, get width and then we can return type dot get width. And I'm just going to copy this for. I think it just go like that. There you go. Okay, height. And also the weight is a float. Got to remember that. So we'll change that to float. All right, there you go. Um, and we're also going to have a move, so protected. So it's going to be a kind of hidden uh, method here. And we're going to call it move x. Um, so we're going to be using this to calculate the collisions of moving on the x-axis. It's just a good universal way of doing it and uh, checking the collisions. So uh, we're not checking the collisions and everything in the uh, the player class. Uh, we're checking it here. So every entity has access to uh, collision checking, and it's all going to be done properly this way. Um, okay, so let's actually finally add the collisions in here. Um, so let's do that. Now, you guys have to bear with me a little bit. It can be a little complicated. Uh, but I'll explain it and I'll also do a diagram and everything just to show you guys. Um, so maybe I should show you guys before I start getting into the code. Alright, so here I have MS Paint open. So I can kind of show you guys how it's going to work. Um, so here, let's do a red square to start out with. So this will be the player. That's about the aspect ratio of it, so it's 14 by 32. Um, so that's the player. Um, and we want to... Ch whoops we want to check if the tiles around it uh, will be colliding with it so um, what what information do we have access to from the player uh, we have access to the X and Y which is right here uh, so I'll just draw that and then we also have uh, the X plus width and Y and then here we have the uh, x plus width and y plus height 
and then here we have the uh, whoops x and the y plus height so basically we have all these tiles around um, and we don't want to check the collision with all the tiles because there's a lot of them right there's uh, here I'll do a thinner pencil here so just say this is the tile grid So basically, you could just go through and check, okay, does the player collide with this tile? Does it collide with this one, this one? And then you know, and then you get into the next row and you go like this. You could do that, um, but it's not very efficient. The best way to do it would be to check the tiles that are within the, um, the, uh, the player's uh, rectangle, right? Um, so which ones are those? Well, let's do a yellow square here. It would be all of these ones, right? So you have all these nine tiles here that are touching the square of the player. So basically what we can do with the the uh, the X and Y here, uh, we can convert this into a tile position so we would get the bottom tile here we would get this one and then using the width and height we can get the top one and then this way we can loop through each one of these tiles and if any of them are collidable then we know that a collisions happened with the player uh, so that's basically how it's going to work uh, we also need to first check if the player interacts with the border of the map so uh, if it interacts with the border of the map, then obviously there's a collision as well. So there's that too. Uh, so that's how we're going to do it. Alright guys, I'm actually going to end this episode here. Uh, so I recorded the full episode, and it ended up being like 40 minutes long. Um, so I'm not going to upload the whole thing in one part. I'm going to upload it in two parts, since usually the episodes are around 20 minutes each. Um, but this is what it'll look like by the end of the next episode. Um, so... If you're watching this one, the other one should also be up right away after this. I just want to split them up just so it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so if you like this video, please leave a like. And if you're new, please subscribe. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys in a couple minutes if you decide to watch the next episode. So see ya.